Hey guys, let's go through the time warp tutorial. The first thing you want to do is in the edit uh, windows on your timeline, set up your clips how you want them transitioned. You're going to also want to put a cross dissolve between the two clips. So I've got one here between uh, the clip that I'm going to show you how to do a time warp zooming out. And then I've got one between the two clips that I'm going to uh, do a, a time warp with the zoom in. Make sure that's two frames. Okay, so with that you can go to the color tab and we'll go through the settings here. So you're going to need Sapphire plugin uh, for most of the effects. The first one you need is the Swish 3D effect. So if you go to the edge of the clip, we're going to step through these keyframes here. The first one, you want to set the mode to blur warp. Wipe amount for 1, motion blur 1, Z distance 1.7 and everything else is default except for scale relative X which is 0.8 as well as fade only from everything else should be default after that you're going to go to 12 keyframes out and this is again for 24 frame per second timeline if you use 30 then you'd probably uh, want to do half second which would be 15 frames out so scale it accordingly all right so the swiss 3d at the uh, 12th keyframe you're going to want to set the z distance to 1.7 wipe amount to zero motion blur to one and scale relative x to 0.8 and only from for the fade. Only from is really the default that you should set for all of your uh, effects for Switch 3D. So I'm not going to keep going over that, but all the other settings are default. Okay, so let's go to the next one, which is Warp Fish, Warp Fish Eye. <clears throat> so at the edge of the clip, you're going to want to set that to minus 0.35. Wrap X and wrap Y to reflect. And then at the end, at the 12th keyframe, I'm sorry. You want to set that to zero. All right. Next one is warp magnify. So you want to set that the magnify amount to 0.5. And I believe that's the only effect I had to change. Yeah, I think the wrap X and Y go to reflect automatically. So 0.5 there. And then back to one at the 12th keyframe. The dent is a standard um, DaVinci Resolve effect. And so for this, you want to set that to type 3. Okay, and we'll go to the edge of the keyframe. Here you want to set the size to 0.468. It was approximately what I felt worked the best. The strength to minus 0.170. Edge behavior reflected. And at the end, the only thing you really need to change is the strength to zero to essentially turn it off. Okay. For the warp chroma, this one, make sure you set the center to 0.5 and 0.5, which puts it right here. Everything, um, the steps is 12, the Z distance is 1.7, and everything else should be default, reflect should be in your default settings and then if you go to the end the Z distance is 1 and as you can see nothing else needs to change okay in this case the brightness and contrast actually instead of having a separate uh, gamma tab or gamma plug-in or effect I just adjusted the offset darks which works just like contrast in this case at the edge of the clip uh, brightness you can play around with this to see what works for me 0.2 I'm sorry 2.277 brightness and negative 0.467 or roughly negative 0.5 offset darks is um, which essentially does a contrast adjustment worked well for me and then at the 12th keyframe set them back to the default values to turn it off okay so that's it for the time warp for zooming out of the first clip, let's go to the second clip. All of the uh, plugins are the same. So for Swish 3D, 
At the edge of the clip here, you're going to set the blur wrap and the wipe amount to 1. Center is 0.5. Motion blur, 1. Z distance, 0.1. Everything else is default with the exception of scale relative X, which is 1.7. And then fade only from uh, should be a default setting that hopefully you have. Okay. So if we go 12 keyframes out, <clears throat> you're going to set the wipe amount to 0 0.160, Z distance to 1, motion blur still at 1, and the relative or scale relative X 1.112. If you go out to an additional 8 keyframes, so that would be keyframe number 20. That's where you set your scale relative X to 1, which is default. And also, this would also be all set to the default, which is zero wipe amount. Or actually, it's not default, but zero wipe amount and a Z distance to 1. Okay, let's go to warp fisheye. In this case, we'll start here at the edge of the clip. The amount is negative 0.35. And then we go all the way to the end of the clip, which is essentially about 31 keyframes out. And that's what worked for this clip. I set it to zero. Okay. Let's go to the next one, which is uh, the warp magnify. Uh, magnify amount 0 0.48, 0 0.5, somewhere around there. Everything else is default. And then at the 24th keyframe, we set the magnify amount to 1. Okay, for the dent, that's going to be uh, type 3, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.468, negative 0 0.170, and reflect it is what worked for, for this clip. You may want to, again, play with that as you see fit. And then the 24th keyframe, just set the strength to zero to basically turn it off. The warp chroma effect. For this one, uh, the steps is 12, which is default, but the Z distance is what you want to adjust to 0.1. And yes, that's it. That's the only thing that changes there. And on the 24th keyframe, I set it to one to turn it off. And then brightness and contrast at the edge, the brightness 2.277 roughly and negative 0.467. And I turned this off actually after 20 keyframes. That's about roughly when it, it, it really needed to, since this is a dynamic keyframe, it, it blends it. And uh, I thought that was about where it should be off when I'm basically done with the zoom effect. Okay. Okay, so let's go to the first clip for the time warp zoom in. So at the edge of the clip, for the swish 3D effect, we want to set the, the wipe for blur, I'm sorry, the mode will be blur warp. The wipe amount 1, center 0.5.5. The motion blur 1, Z distance 0.1. Everything else is default until you get down to scale relative X, one point seven and then there's a few other settings that um, help with this effect that you can also customize shear y in in this case i set it for negative point zero zero six fade only from and everything else is default now if we go down here to the 12th keyframe you're going to notice uh, several other settings were adjusted so um, the wipe amount zero motion blur one z distance point one and then if you scroll down here, uh, most everything else is the same relative, a scale relative X is 1.7. My shear X, I put in a little bit, negative 0.018. And shear Y, negative 0.006. Relative amp from 0.974. And then everything else is default, as you can see. Okay. Let's go to fisheye. So with the fisheye, 
we start out at negative 0.35 and at the 12th keyframe we just set that to zero so real straightforward there everything else is default the warp magnify we're going to start out at 0.48 everything else is default and then we just basically at the 12th keyframe turn that to one okay the next one's the dent dent type 3 you're going to want to change the size to 0.468 the strength to negative 0 0.170 reflect it behavior and then at the 12th keyframe just change the strength to zero s warp chroma for this one let's go back here to the edge the z distance will be 0.1 and everything else is default and then at the 12th keyframe, switch it back to 1. The brightness and contrast, I, at the edge of the keyframe, the same values I've used before that seem to work pretty well. I guess I could play around with some of these, but I didn't bother. 2.277 and negative 0.467 for the offset darks. And then at the edge, you set the brightness to 1 and the darks back to 0 for default. Okay, so that's it for the first clip of the time warp zooming in. And then let's go to the second clip where it's a little different here. Uh, the swish effect, our swish 3D, wipe amounts 1, motion blur 1, Z distance is 1.7, the scale relative X is 0.8 here, and uh, fade only from, everything else is default. So in this case, we go out 12 keyframes. So uh, I think the timing is a little different. That's why it looks uh, closer together, but it is 12 keyframes. And here we did set the wipe amount 0.145, the Z distance to one, the scale relative X to 0.971, and everything else is default. Go out to the uh, an additional eight keyframes, so that's the 20th keyframe, and this is where we set the wipe amount to zero, Z distance is at zero, and we set the scale X um, back to the default values of one. All right, so we'll go to the warp fisheye. If we go at the edge of the clip, um, in this case, we're starting at negative 0.35. We go out. 24 keyframes from the edge and set it to zero. The warp magnify, we set that at 0.48 for the magnify amount at the edge, and we go out 24. I'm sorry, the warp fisheye actually was not the 24th keyframe. So for the warp key for, uh, warp fisheye, it was actually at the 12th keyframe where you turned it off. Again, it it depends on your your image, but in this case, I did want to turn it off earlier. For the warp magnify, that one's the 24th keyframe that you're turning off or setting the magnify back to one. Okay, so at the for the dent, the dent we've got type three. The size 0.468, strength minus 0.170, and reflect it. And then I went all the way out to the 31st keyframe or so to turn it off, where the strength is zero. S warp chroma. For this, the Z distance at the edge is 1.70. And then again, at the 31st keyframe, we set that to 1. Brightness and contrast, my typical numbers, 2.277. In this case, I didn't put anything for offset darks uh, because the contrast uh, would have clouded the image too much. So I, I kind of left that out. I wanted to see the color come in, and if I put something in there, you can see how that made it too dark, so I didn't want to do that. Okay? And then at the 
20th keyframe brightness back to one and uh, to turn it off. So that's it. That's how you do the time warp. Uh, if you've got any questions, uh, please leave a comment below. I did try to just keep this as short as possible, assuming that you've seen some of my other tutorials and didn't go through all the basics. Just wanted to focus on the settings. If you have any issues, uh, let me know. Leave a comment. Otherwise, like and subscribe. Have a good day. Peace.